Luke, huge congratulations. What a massive statement you just sent to everyone else in the field here at the Betfred World Match Play. Yeah, in a way, obviously, it's a, it's a great statement, but... It's, it's just one game, you know. It was a fantastic performance from myself, but it was a fantastic performance from Ricardo as well. Just a great game. Um, if I didn't play as well as I needed, did there needed to, I could not been here right now. And Ricardo could have been. So uh, I just played the player to be honest. I, you know, he was. I was trying to outscore him and uh, outfinish him, and just a couple of missed doubles from himself there. And I think ten four could have been like nine nine seven, you know, eight six, or it could have been a closer game. So. But uh, yeah, just really pleased that I got out of the line there. But that was that was a good statement for, for myself. How much confidence did you take from winning the World Cup? Because you got on a sublime performance in the final, then lifting the trophy, then coming here. It looks like it's elevated you to yet another level. Yeah, when you when you win titles, I think it does give that error of confidence. It, it does. Um, you know, the last, since I say the last twelve months when I was here, you know, I felt like that was the turning point for myself. I think that that major semi final it did hurt a little bit losing to Johnny. You know, he was the better player, but you know, it drove me on to, to, to do more. Obviously, five major titles since then. So, yeah, I gained a lot of experience. And usually, my first round is my Achilles heel is when people can, you know, beat me. That's that's their chance. And uh, you know, now maybe I've I've changed and I can I can be a lot better in the the early early stages. And you know, hopefully, I can carry it on. But following the performance, it's going to be tough. The atmosphere was absolutely electric mm, out there. It was. What did you say to Ricardo walking off on that? Second break, was he feeling the atmosphere a little bit? You saw you start having a little embrace and say something to him. What, the second break? Yeah, yeah, yeah I just I said great dart because if he hit that 150, I can't remember if it was six, I think it would have been six four, but I just felt like he was not doing much wrong and he was kind of unlucky not to be six four down and it was seven three. But you know, I think we both embraced because we was like, this is quite a good game to be honest. We're quite, you know, he's quite unlucky um, to not be at sort of level stance or even in front, but you know, we. we He's, he's a very nice guy, Ricardo. He deserves a lot of respect, and uh, you know maybe he's a bit misread. Some things have happened in in the last year that you know, but he, he's a great guy to be honest, and uh, very fantastic player. So it's uh, it was nice for him to play well, I guess. You know, I think he said to me afterwards that was the, that was the greatest he's felt on the stage for a long time, and he enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, he's a, there's a lot more to come from him, I'm sure, in the future. Luke, many congratulations. Thank you, Tom. Luke, how different are you as a player? now at this year's World Match Play to what you were last year, 12 months ago? Yeah, I'm, I'm a lot different, of course, because the experience of just playing on the big stage so many times, they change you, they, uh, they elevate you in a way. Um, I think when I was set here 12 months ago, I must have played on the stage Premier Leagues and about 70, 80 times. That just helps you, it's experience and all these different different players you play and these different experiences. Being world champion obviously helped me a lot as well, so... You know, I'm obviously a changed person from 12 months ago, but usually my first ranked games are the ones where that's the opportunity to beat me. You know, I'm usually not at my best, but yeah, it was nice to put in a great performance in the first round, which I don't usually do. Um, Ricardo was obviously a big part, well, a, a part of your story at the World Championships. That was some game, a very different game. Mm. To up there. It was sort of in your mind that you knew you needed to regardless of what I play I don't care if it's Ricardo or you know I don't know anybody else at the Pro Tour qualifiers I would want to play the same to be honest I don't I don't think I would have changed my performance or tried any harder or you know against anybody if it was you know any player in the Pro Tour I think you have to play your best because there's no easy rounds anymore I think a lot of people would have disregarded Ricardo before he played me and thought Luke's just going to thrash him and he's just too good but he just showed you there. If I didn't play my best, he, he could have beat me. So, you know, you can't take anybody for granted in this game. And uh, I'm glad that I have that attitude because if I did, I probably wouldn't be sad right now. So I'm, I'm proud of the way that I, you know, worked hard and tried to outscore him, tried to outfinish him. Um, and you know, he was quite, he was unlucky. If he'd have played anybody else, you know, nine times out of ten in the top sixteen, he probably would have won. And the draw threw out a huge tie. Uh, last week in Michael Van Gogh versus Luke Littler. Mm. You obviously know them both very well. It's, it's a great game. How, how do you see that one going? I think it, it's hard to hard to predict, even honest. I think if you're going to go on form, you're going to pick Luke, aren't you? But, you know, M Michael's been at the top of his game for so long. And the last 12 months haven't been the way he's wanted it. And it, he's one of them players that he's not going to like it. He's not going to like me taking his thunder. He's not going to like Luke taking his thunder. He's not going to like anybody taking his thunder. So... I'm, I'm going to assure you that he's going to come out and he's going to 
put in a good performance. He's not going to want to roll over and let you know me or Luke, anybody beat him. He wants to put out a statement. I can guarantee you that. So Luke knows he's in for a tough game. But I think if Luke plays his A game how he's playing and Michael plays his A game what he's playing like at the moment, could be an absolute fantastic game. And I'm going to assure you, I'm happy they're playing against each other and not me. <laughs> but, you know, I'm a darts fan, so I'll be there to watch, I'm sure. But it could be one of them games where... You know, you've got two great players playing against each other and they don't play great. It happens a lot. You know, they're, they're, they're too desperate to beat one another. But uh, I can assure you, I'll be there sat there watching, happy it's not me. <laughs> Thank you. Luke, you have touched on it a little bit there that other players may have dismissed Ricardo looking at this form that he's been this year. Do you think that's a real advantage to why we don't see early exits from Luke Combs just because you do genuinely have that attitude of it doesn't matter who I'm facing, if they can beat me, so I need to play at this level. Yeah, you're, you're right, 100% right. I think that is the attitude I have. I just don't, anybody I'm playing, I never give that aspect of, I've won this game before I've played it. You just can't, and that is just the proof. You know, you can never believe you've won a game if, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're not in your A game, then, you know, like I just proved there, I would not have won. Um, so that is a good aspect in my game I have, that I never take anybody for, for granted and... Uh, you know, Ricardo's a fantastic player. He's, he's he's won big stage titles in the European Tour. I know he hasn't had his best year this year, but um, you know, sometimes something can rejuvenate you. And it's like two years ago when I played Nathan Aspinall. He didn't, he hadn't had a great year, and everyone disregarded him to play against me. And then he he played fantastic and beat me. So it's just experiences that you have along the way in, in your career that learn you these experiences. And I learn from experience I've had that don't ever underestimate anybody. Uh, with respect to everybody else in this tournament, the, the bottom half of the draw has got Van Gerwen, it's got Littler, Smith, mm. Anderson, Cross. Do you feel like you're in the almost favourable half of the draw and does that affect your mindset? Absolutely right? not. I think if, if you go on the seedings row, we've got Stephen Bunting, the major winner this year. Then we're looking forward, you've got Dimitri Martin or Johnny Clayton, who are all playing fantastic again. And then you could have Gerwin Price, Ross Smith, Josh Rock, all these fantastic players. No, I don't think I'm in the easy draw at all. I think I'm in a hard draw. But I don't think the other guys are in an easy draw either. I think this is the state of doubts nowadays. There is no easy draws now. You know, I'm in a tough draw, but all the other guys in the other half are in a tough draw as well. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's one half that's easier than the other. But, you know, you have got Gary, Michael, Luke and Michael in that little little bit. So, yeah, that is, that is quite tough. But only two of them can get through because only two of them can win. So it's going to be easier in that way. But... I know if I win, if I get, well not win this time, if I get to the final, I know I've got, I'm going to have a tough run, I know that. Um, but yeah, whoever it is, whether it's Stephen or, uh, or Ryan, both both been playing some fast, fantastic darts, so uh, hopefully I can keep on playing like that. It was a decent run last year, but it, it was a real battle, remember, a real battle against Dirk mm. Van Dijk and Boulder, and then a strange game with Damon Hetter where it was just like 10 breaks of throw, something mm. stupid. Have you learned from that experience, because it was, it was probably your first sort of big run at the Winter Gardens and this is a completely different tournament to the others. Yeah, I think I've just learned a lot of things in the last 12 months to be honest. I think I'm a different player. You know, when I used to play in them games, I used to be a little bit tight, a little bit apprehensional, thinking, you know, I really want to win this game, I'm, you know, I'm desperate to win this game. But nowadays, because I've achieved so much and won so much, I feel like I'm a little bit more relaxed when I walk into these big, big games. You know, this is a big game. It's the first round of, of the World Match, but no one wants to go home early. No one wants to be sitting at home watching, watching darts for for a whole week, and you're not in the tournament. So I feel like you know I've learned from these experiences, and uh, you know that they, they make you stronger. Um, so yeah, you know, regardless of what happens, I know I'm gonna have to work hard and keep playing well, uh, and I know I can. I like the experience from the worlds. You know, I didn't go the way I wanted it to start, but I managed to finish it off well. So I know that that's in my locker. So hopefully I can keep it up. Cheers, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on the win. Your fourth time here, what sort of makes this place unique? What sort of yeah, helps you to build momentum when you get here? I just think it's, it's just an iconic venue, you know. I think every player loves it. You know, the world is obviously always special, and I think that there's a, it's a split 50 50. There's a lot of players like the older generation would say this is the best venue, a lot of the younger generation would say the world championships is the best venue because of it, it's just prestigious. But you know, they are the older generation are right, this is a very, very prestigious venue. We all love playing here real darts fans they create real great atmospheres um, it's just it, I, I think it's hard to explain but when you're a player it's just, a, it's just iconic 
and uh, coming here is a special feeling. So to play here for my fourth time, you know, it's, it's fantastic, and I hope I can I can be here for many more times in the future. You mentioned the same final the team has been the turning point. So how much did you learn from that defeat? And how much did that springboard your second half of the year last year? Yeah, it, it was a massive influence. I think I was coming very very close to to making major finals again after my UK Open. But you know, them European Tour wins I had obviously given that extra experience, made that semi final, made another major semi final at the World Series finals, and you know, that was another disappointing defeat. But when I made that, that semi final at the Grand Prix, my third or fourth time on the trot, I was like, you know, I'll, uh, this is the time now. And I obviously won that. And when I played Gezi in the final, I thought, you know, this is the biggest chance to change your life. And, it, you know, I did. And I went on then with the confidence and won a lot after that. So, yeah, I just didn't run with the confidence, to be honest. But last year, making the semi finals was definitely helped. Without recent success, must be determined to take another, another box here. Definitely, I think I would, if I did, you know, if I was to win the match, play, I'd be gutted I didn't win the Premier League because you know that would have been a great, massive feat to have done, you know, World Championship, Premier League, and match play. But you know, you can't win everything. There's so many great players in, in this in this day and age. So if I can, you know, go and win the match play and win the World Championship in the same year, be fantastic. But you can't look too far ahead because I'm gonna have to play really good for the next four games. So uh, you know, I know what I got to do and I know how well I can play. Thank you. Uh, Luke, with uh, tonight's performance, obviously you just pushed to a tremendous match uh, against um, Ricardo. Uh, do you think that's now your line in the sand and a, a benchmark for the other players in your safe match? This is what I can do. Prove me wrong. Yeah, I think I'll put a great benchmark. But if you know anybody else goes and hits a uh, hundred and twelve average or goes and hits ninety two, I don't think that make, discounts them from winning or being the favourite. You know, there's no, you know, it's just one game. If I go out there, to, you know, on Tuesday and hit a ninety two average and win, it's the same feat, isn't it? You win. You, the most important thing is you win. I know a lot of people are going to be thinking the game between Luke Little and Michael Van Gogh, and you know that's going to be the, the stall whoever plays the best there. But you know if, if Luke wins or Michael wins with a 92 average, they won't care because all that matters is you're in the next round that allows you to go and play well again. So uh, I'm really, really proud of the way I played, and obviously I've set out a great marker, but that doesn't mean I'm going to win the tournament. I still have to carry on working hard and playing well to, to go on and lift the title. And just following on from that, obviously, you know, it was a very uh, entertaining game, but it was done in quick fashion, you know, 20 minutes around there. Mm. Did you have your mind thinking, I've got to get home and watch the big match tomorrow? Yeah, I did, but I want to go home and watch the big match in good spirits. I didn't want to go home <laughs> after losing. So that, that, I must admit, I was in the back of my mind thinking, I don't want to go home out of the world match play, watching England in a defeatist mood. So I can, I can go home tomorrow and enjoy myself and watch it, but... I'm sure I won't be able to enjoy it because it's going to be a stressful game. That's what England will like, but uh, hopefully they can go on and win it. Great, great, great performance. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Thank you.